Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today in this tutorial we are writing a pattern program that is we want to print a python program to print star in this shape that is nothing but right triangle shape. We can write this program in different ways. Here we are using the nested for loops to print this pattern. Before writing the program let's see what is the input and output of the program. We already know what is the output of the program. We want stars in the right triangle shape, right? And for the inputs, we'll ask the user to enter the number of rows he want in the output. We can write our pattern like this also within the matrix or array. Here we can see we are printing stars in different row and column. Here these are the rows and these are the columns. So we are printing stars in different row and column and here in our program we are asking the user to enter the number of rows he want in the output. Here number of rows of this pattern is 5. Here we can see 5 rows. We are not asking about the column from the user that is because the columns in this pattern is dependent on the row. How it is dependent on the row that we will see later. So no need to take the number of column from the user. We only need number of rows from the user. So here in our program input is nothing but number of rows and output is nothing but this pattern. When n is 3 that is nothing but the number of row is 3 we will get output like this. When n is 4 number of row is 4 we will get output like this. When n is 5 number of row we will get output like this. n is just a variable here. I took that to denote the number of rows. Alright, this is about the input and output of the program. Next, let's see the requirement of this program. That is which concept I need to know before writing this program. So in this program, we are using input function to take input from the user. And we are using nested for loops. That is we are using a for loop inside another for loop. And we are using print function to print the output. I'll think that you know about the input function and print function how it works. We talk about the nested for loop how it works when we use that in the program. So let's write the program. So in the python file first we'll take the input from the user. As I said to take the input from the user I'll use input function. Here we can see input function and inside that I'll write a message okay. Or you can write how many rows you want in the output like that. This message will display on the output screen. This helps the user to know what he is entering. Here when the user will see this message enter the number of row. He know he is entering the number of row of the output. And when I enter a value here we need to store that right. So to store that I will take a variable. I will call that variable as n. So here we are taking the input from the user using input function and we are storing that value or the input in the variable n. But here I am using python 3 and in python 3 by default this input function will take input as the string value. But here we want number of row that is the integer value right that's why I need to convert the input to integer. So that's why I will use int function here. If you are using python 3 then you need to use int function here. If you are using python 2 then no need to use this int function to convert the input to integer. So now we are done with the input. We are asking the user to enter the number of row and we are storing that integer value in the variable n. Next we want to print the stars in different row and column. For that we need to use the nested for loop. Nested for loop is nothing but for loop inside the another for loop. We are using a for loop inside the another for loop. So that means we are using two for loops here. So one for loop is for row and another for loop is for column. So let's see why we need for loops to print stars in the row and column. Why we are using two for loop that is for loop for row and for loop for column in this row. If I take this as row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4 this is the row 4. Here we can see in row 4 this is the column right this is column 1 column 2 column 3 and column 4. Here we can see in a row I want to print star in column 1 next I want to print star in column 2 I want to print star in column 3 I want to print star in column 4. 
that is we are printing star again and again but in the different columns right if i want to execute a piece of code again and again for different values then that time we'll use loops right here to do this also to print this star in different columns we are using for loop so that's why we need for loop for column because we want to print star again and again in different column we are using the for loop for that next let's see why we are using for loop for row because here we can see here we are printing star in one row next we are printing star in second row next we are printing star in third row next we are printing star in fourth row so we want to print star in different row right we want to print star again and again in the different row so to do that also we need a loop so here we are using for loop and as i said we are using nested for loops here and in the nested for loop there will be out of for loop and in a for loop for example here is a for loop and inside that if i take another for loop now this is called as nested for loop and here this is the inner for loop and this will be the outer for loop so in our program we have two for loop that is for loop for row and for loop for column here the for loop for row will be the outer for loop and the for loop for column will be the inner for loop you may ask why that is because here we are printing star like this first we'll go for the row 1 that is the first row and we'll print star at column 0 next we'll go to the next row and we'll print star at column 0 next column 1 next we'll go to the next line and we'll print star in the next row at row 3 here row 2 at column 0 we'll print star next we'll print column 1 next we'll print star at column 2 after finishing this column we'll go to the row 4 we'll print star like this that's why the outer for loop will be the for loop for row inside that we'll take the for loop for column that will be the inner for loop so our program works somewhat like this at row 1 we'll print star at column 1 print star right next go to next line next we'll take row 2 column 1 print star next at column 2 print star go to next line next i'll do the row 3 i'll do same thing column 1 column 2 column 3 at row 3 print star print star print star go to next line this is how our uh, program prints the output here we can see at first we need a for loop for row here we can see row first right so we need for loop for row outer inside that we need for loop for column right next we need to print that next we need to go to the next line here we can say at column 1 column 2 we need to print star that's why i took the for loop for column here column 1 column 2 column 3 in three column we need to print star that's why we took a for loop for column row 1 row 2 row 3 we need to print star that is we need to print star again and again in every row right that's why we are using for loop for row okay that's why we are using two for loops and the outer for loop will be the for loop for row so here i'll take the for loop for row so here i is a variable you can take any variable but don't take n because we already took variable n and we stored a value in that so don't use n again but you can use any other variable here next here i use range function that is because we are using the for loop to execute a piece of code again and again for different value right but we don't know when to stop this execution that is how many times i need to execute the for loop body so that will be given by this range function now here so here i need to mention how many rows i want in the output as we know we want n rows right here we are asking the user to enter the number of rows and we are storing that in the variable n that means here we want n rows so i'll take the range as n so coming to the range function in the range function we can mention start end and step if i just take n here that means start is 0 okay it will take the default value and step is 1 it also take the default value so here n is nothing but the end value 
So here range will be from 0 to n and step is 1. So when I give n as 4, here I'll get 0 to 4. So I'll get 0, 1, 2, 3. I won't get 4 because here end is exclusive in the range function, right? So when I take n as 4, I'll get i value as 0, 1, 2, 3. But total 4 rows, that's okay with us. Right, we are done with the for loop for row. Next, we need for loop for column, right? Here we can see after for loop for row, we need for loop for column. So I'll take for loop for column like this for j in range. Here j is the variable name. Here also I'll use range function because I need to know how many columns I want in each row. Because we are using this for loop inside this for loop for row, we need to mention how many columns I want in each row, right? So let's see how many columns I want in each row. So here we took row from 0 to n, so range, so first row will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And at row 0, here we can see I want 1 star. So at row 0, I want 1 star or 1 column, number of column. At row 1, I want 2 column. At row 2, I want 3 column. At row 3, I want 4 column. At row 4, I want 5 column. So here I took the variable to denote the row as i. In the for loop, I took for i in range, right? So here i is nothing but row. So when row is 0, I want 1 column. When row is 1, I want 2 column. When row is 2, I want 3 column. That is nothing but i plus 1 column, right? At row 0, we want 1 column. That is nothing but when i is 0, we want column is nothing but i plus 1 column, right? That is nothing but 1 column. So, I'll take range as here, i plus 1. At every row, I need i plus 1 column. Here also range will take from 0 to i plus 1. So, initially when i value is 0, so it will be 0 to i plus 1, 0 to 1. So, it will give only one column at row 0. Next here, I need to print. Here we can say after printing for loop for row, next we took for loop for column, next we need to print star. So to print star, I am using print function. So here I want to print star, so I will put that in a double quotes. And here I will use end parameter in the print function. In the print function, there is end parameter. By default, it will take the value as slash n. So that is nothing but after printing the message, whatever we will write in the print function, go to the next line. But here we don't want that. Here, after printing this star, I want this star in the same line, right? We want these stars in the same line. That's why I took here end is equal to empty string. Here I'm using this to keep the control in the same line because the default value of end parameter is slash n. But I don't want to go to the new line after printing star. That's why I'm keeping the control in the same line using this. Right. Next, here I'll use a print function. So now why this? This is because I'm using this in the for loop for row. I'll, I'll come out of the for loop for column and I'll use this print function here. That is nothing but I'm writing this print function inside the for loop for row. That is because here we can see after printing star, right? I need to go to the next line, right? Here also, I'll print column 1 and column 2. Here I took um, end as empty string, so it will print star in the same line. After that, I need to go to the next line, right? Here, that's why I used this print function. As I said, in the print function, by default, end value is slash n. If you want, you can take it as end is equal to slash n. That is nothing but when I execute this, go to the next line. But the default value of end is slash n, so I won't mention this. I'll just take the print function. It will go to the new line. After each row, we need to go to the new line to print the next row stars. Okay, that's why I'm using this print function. And one more thing, if you are using Python 2, then you can't use end parameter. If you do that, you'll get an error because in the Python 2, print is not a function. It is just a statement. So to achieve this, to keep the control in the same line in Python 2, you need to use comma at the end of the statement. Alright, so now we are done with the program. So I'll save this and run this. So let's see, I'll enter number of row as 5 and here we can see the output. 
so here if you want you can give end as space it will give the space between the stars in each column so let's see that i'll save and run i'll take number of row as 4 here we can see here now we can see a space between the stars right here we can see so in this way you can write this program now if i didn't use this end what will happen so i'll remove this okay i'll just use like this and if i execute this i'll get all the star in the vertical line now here we can see because it won't keep the control in the same line okay that's why we'll get in a vertical line now if i didn't use this print function what will happen now i'll get all the star in the single line here we can see like this because here i used end as space okay so it will print all the stars in the single line if you want to go to the new line you need to use this print function all right so this is about the program next we'll see how this program works so the program execution will begin from here it will ask the user to enter the number of row so if i enter number of row as 3 so n value becomes 3 so next it will execute this for loop body for i in range n so that is nothing but 0 to n n is nothing but 3 so i can take i value as 0 1 and 2 initially i value will be 0 next it will execute this for loop for j in range i plus 1 so 0 to i plus 1 so 0 to 1 so j can be only 0 1 is exclusive right so j is 0 so initially j value will be 0 so it will print a star so in the output we will get a star next end will be space so it will take a space next again control will go to the for loop for column that is jth for loop here we can see j range is over so it will come out of that loop and it will execute this print function so the control will go to the next line now again control goes to this for loop for i the for loop for row and now i value becomes 1 so again it will execute this for loop for j in range i plus 1 so j value will be 0 to i plus 1 so 0 to 2 i is 1 right so 0 to 2 so i will get 0 comma 1 so initially j value will be 0 so it will print the star and a space so it will print a star Next again control will go to the jth for loop and now j value becomes 1. So it will print another star. Okay, It will execute the print function and it will print another star. Now again control will go to the jth for loop but here j range is over. So it will come out of the for loop and it will execute print function. So control will go to the next line. Now here again control goes to the for loop for i. So now i value becomes 2. So now again it will execute this for loop for j in range i plus 1. So 0 to 3. i value is 2 right now. So we will get j as 0 comma 1 comma 2. So initially j value will be 0. So it will print a star. Next again control will go here. j value becomes 1 and it will execute the print function. So it will print another star. Now again control will go to the jth for loop j value becomes 2 and it will execute this print function so it will print another star. Now again control will go to the jth for loop but here range is over so it will come out of that loop and it will execute this print function so control will go to the next line. Again it will control goes to for i in range n the for loop for row but here range is over so it will come out of that and it stop the execution of the program that's why we'll get output like this okay this is how this program works so that's it for now guys thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel i will meet you in next class till then take care